and there's this oil seal which goes uh, that's it oil seal retainer and it goes on the back there so we're going to put the oil seal into the uh, retainer and then put the retainer on the case so i'm simply going to tap this new oil seal into the seal retainer uh, don't forget open side towards the oil and obviously there's the oil is in the gearbox and we want to keep it there so the open side is inwards so i'm just going to tap that seal into the retainer and then we'll put the retainer onto the housing okay so the uh, oil new oil seal is in the retainer put some well seal on gasket and well seal on the back of the uh, casing so then in a minute we'll put the gasket on when the well seal's gone off a bit oil seal retainer and that's held on with three screws and so that's in place the uh, oil seal actually runs on the uh, gearbox sprocket that we're going to put on later but um, I'm just putting this on now then, then it's done we, we could put it on later um, but I think it's just best to get it on then it's, it's out of the way when we go to fit the, that uh, that main gear which we which comes through the oil seal okay so uh, I think we are now ready to start in, when when that's on then we'll actually start being able to insert the gears etc actually in the gearbox and uh, there's the uh, sprocket oil seal in place can't get a very good light on that but uh, I think you get the idea okay and when we put the gearbox sprocket on later that's actually what uh, runs on the uh, oil seal righty ho so uh, we're getting ready to fit the gearbox the new gearbox sprocket uh, onto the back of the gearbox uh, I think it's always worth fitting a new gearbox sprocket because <clears throat> it's such a complete pain on these engines to replace the gearbox sprocket and so a i find they're pretty worn out anyway and it just makes it just makes sense because to replace the gearbox sprocket you have to basically strip the primary chain down to where it is now that's with all the clutch out the shovels over all the primary chain off everything and it's a total pain so always worth uh, replacing i think this is a uh, 18 tooth which appears to be uh i think that's standard um I think we, there's a slightly bigger sprocket on the T160. This is an 18 tooth. That's the 18 tooth came off it. Okay, uh, so we're going to be putting this sprocket onto the uh, uh, high gear bearing. So uh, it's going to slot on there. Now there's a few things to think about to do this. Okay, I haven't got the torch on, but we've got that's the uh, oil seal that we fitted uh, in the carrier then on the inside of the high gear there's that oil seal that we put in the in the high gear there so that oil seal stops oil sneaking down the shaft there and <clears throat> coming out this oil seal will uh, run on the outside of the sprocket so that stops oil uh, coming out there but what can happen is this slides this slides onto the shaft and oil can sneak down uh sort of through under the splines if you see what i mean so there's an oil seal on the outside there's an oil seal in the mid in the sort of center but in the middle there's no oil seal <clears throat> so two things triumph later on they changed it and they put this groove in which i do not think is on earlier models and that groove is for an o-ring okay to try and stop the oil sneaking down through those splines and also we're going to put well seal on the splines anyway just uh, for added protection so it's going to be well seal and then this o-ring which is difficult to fit uh, but it goes in that uh, well, tries to go into that groove there although it's always difficult that's the first uh, thing to realize and to think about and we'll be putting a bit of oil on this uh, on here because obviously we don't want the oil seal running dry uh, to, in, in the first instance before it gets oil on it the second thing is that we have to tighten this up well it, the, the nut goes up to nearly it's actually 58 foot pounds in the manual so 16 years damn it so i'm unconcerned 
So that's a huge tool, but there's no way of locking the engine because, you know, the gearbox is on. We haven't got the primary chain on. We can't uh, use the uh, locking tool. Well, we can use the locking tool, that method that I used uh, for, for doing up the main shaft nut. I suppose I could put that on and lock it. Um, but then I, I, I can only uh, get a spanner on. I can't get a socket on then to torque it up because obviously the locking tool would be in the way. But that would be one thing. I can't wait, as, as I can with the rest of the engine, with that main shaft nut, if you're really stuck, what you can do is rebuild the primary first and then lock the primary chain. And you can do that nut up and indeed the um, the nuts on the in the timing case, you can do that up later on when the primary chain's uh, in place and you can lock the primary chain. But in this case, we can't uh, wait for that because obviously the sprockets, you know, before the primary chain. So we need to find a way of locking this sprocket um, in order to uh, sign it up to, to torque it. Uh, and there's various different ways of doing it. And what I do is I use a vise and an old rear chain and to lock the sprocket. And we'll, we'll come on to that later, but it's, it's, it's effective method seems to work. Anyway, first thing I'm gonna do is gonna put some well seal on put a bit of oil on the sprocket. We're gonna put the sprocket on. Then we're gonna try and get this O-ring in, which is not as easy as it sounds because that groove isn't actually, doesn't tend to be big enough for the O-ring. Then there's the locking tab and then the nut. And when that's all on, then we'll uh, look at locking that sprocket so that we can tighten the nut up to 60 foot pounds. Okay, uh, we got some well seal on the splines, on the shaft and uh, a little bit of oil on the surface that's going to make with the uh, oil seal. So then that just pushes on, and there it goes in, goes in through the oil seal, there we go. Now I've got to pull it back out again and uh, see if I can expose that uh, that groove a bit uh, to get that, uh, to get this o-ring in. And like I say, it's a pain. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and pull the uh, high gear out and push the sprocket in so that it reveals the uh, groove a bit. Okay, uh, there we go. It wasn't bad at all, actually. So uh, just managed to pull the high gear out, get that uh, oil seal in the groove. Then I'm going to put the uh, locking tab on. We put it on with the sort of teeth facing outwards. Otherwise, obviously, it would destroy the uh, oil seal. I've got there, but it's kind of fine. But there's, uh, so it sits on the splines outwards, not inwards. Then I'm just going to dab some uh, lock, uh, thread lock on the uh, on the seals. Go, I'll go around, a bit ham fisted, do it left handed. And then we're going to put the uh, put the nut on and get ready to lock lock it, and so we can torque it up. Okay, so here's my patent method for uh, tightening up the uh, gearbox sprocket. So uh, what I've got is I've got my uh, temporary vise. I don't have a vise on the bench anymore because it's only a small bench and it was in the way. So what I have now is I have a pair of clamps. And when I need the vise, I simply clamp the vise to the bench, which works fine, um, generally speaking. Uh, so clamp the vise and then I've got an old rear chain which I've put around the sprocket and then I've clamped tightly clamped the rear chain in the vise so that we should uh, be able to tighten the sprocket up and what will happen is I've got the towel here because as I tighten it it will actually drag the engine because it's that tight it will drag it to the vise uh, and so the engine will like hit the vise if you know what I mean and then we'll keep turning until the sprocket's done up tight. I'll put it on, I'll put the camera on the tripod, but I'll have a look. So to facilitate that, I bought this uh, one and seven eighths inch socket, but I could only get a one inch drive. So then I had to get an adapter from one inch down to three quarters. And then I had to get another adapter from three quarters down to half inch, standard half inch drive. So that, oh now, we'll put that in the, uh, and that'll go on, fine. Now, if you haven't got uh, that socket, it was quite expensive having to buy those three parts. This is a standard factory tool, which you can get from somewhere like LP Williams. Again, one and seven eighths uh, 
that's no, but that's a box spanner. Of course, the only problem with this at that is you can't talk it up. But I think in some of the manuals, I think it actually just says do it up very tight for the simple reason that most people can't get a socket on there. Uh, a, you want the right size, and B, it has to be quite deep so it doesn't uh, catch on the end of the main shaft. So I think the manuals actually say do this up very tight. I mean, back in the day, you know, when I was a young and callow youth, I would get, you know, yeah, I have to admit it, you get the old cold chisel out because you wouldn't have a spanner that big. And you'd put it on with a, with a lump hammer boop, 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 and you'd knock it round uh, to lock it with a cold chisel and you'd unlock it with a cold chisel. But these days, obviously, you know, we've got a bit more money. We've got a bit more refinement, we've got a bit more time. The bike doesn't have to be back on the road for Monday. You know, back in the day, you had to get the bike back on the road because you needed it for work on the Monday or whatever. But now, of course, we can take our time. So, um, yeah. So I'm just going to, I'll put the camera on the tripod and we'll have a go at tightening this up to 60 uh, foot pounds using this painted method, which will either work or the engine will fall off the bench or the vice will suddenly rocket skyward as it's ripped from the, uh, from its uh, not, uh, sort of mountings, oh, you know, should be okay. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, I've got the salt wrench up to uh, 64 pounds, well, it's about 58, so just under 60. Get the socket on. And we'll put this on. Uh, mm. I hope I, I put it in gear. I hope I remember to put it in gear, because if it's not in gear, this ain't going to work. Oh, God, I don't think it's in gear. It's not in gear, is it? It's not in gear, Chris. Oh, no, it quite is. Yeah, it's just tightening up now. It took a lot more than I thought to get it to tighten. Now the engine's pulling into the vice there, and hopefully staying on the bench. Let's watch those feet a bit. I think we're fine. I really don't want this engine coming off onto the garage floor. I'm not sure. I'm happy, but I'm not that happy. I'll try it. Keep my eye on this engine. The thing is, I really want another pair of hands. I want to be able to do this up and hold the engine at the same time, which ain't going to happen. I need to obviously, uh, okay, I might have to grab a neighbour and get them to come and help. Or maybe even my long-suffering wife, I don't know, she's not really a mechanical person. But just to hold the engine might be a good idea. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Right, I have engaged a glamorous assistant who is holding the engine for me. Hello, glamorous assistant. Hello. There she is, okay. So, we're going to put that on there, and we're going to try again. Engine's moving, that's okay. No, let it, let it rise up, but just... Uh, I'm going to have to try and... I'm going to have to try and... There we go. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll do that from time to time because it slips off from that. Should I hold it down? Can you hold it down? I don't. I don't know if you can hold it down. That's the thing. No, I have to right. I'll take three. I just. You can just rest a minute, Christine. I'm going to see if I can find another clamp. I used. To, I should have another G clamp. I can clamp the engine stand down with. Okay, we're we'll trying again. So what I've done is I've raised the vice up off the bench, some blocks of wood. So hopefully the engine won't tilt quite so much. That's the plan. We'll see if that plan works or not. Okay. There we go. There we go. I just do it. Oh, just check it again. I think it clicked, but I'm going to check it again. There 
there we go. Whew. Done. Whew. Right here. And thank you to my glamorous assistant. How was that for you? Yes, it was very good, but it's extra for talking. Oh, well, on camera. <laughs> on camera. Oh, yeah. Well, obviously yeah. you'll get you'll get, get double your, your <laughs> double your normal fee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. And there we have it. The uh, gearbox pocket nut is now uh, done up. The gearbox pockets on. We bent the tab washer over, and uh, great. So we can now uh, carry on. The next job is we're going to put the clutch. Uh, casing on which must be the easiest casing to fit on the entire engine i'm glad to say because you literally just put it in place and do it up with three screws sorted so uh, let's do that